Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, as we are discussing about uh, basic uh, understanding on you know terminal velocity when uh, the flow of a solid uh, uh, body. So, what will be the basic characteristics of that that we are discussing in the previous module uh, in three successive lectures. Here we will start again a uh, uh, different module uh, which is called that uh, flow through granular beds. And in this module, so there will be another uh, three lectures and uh, in this three lectures we will try to cover uh, about that the flow phenomena uh, uh, through granular beds. And in that case, uh, uh, we will be having a different uh, basic uh, law and terminology of this you know uh, flow phenomena whenever it will be flowing through the granular beds. And there also what will be the hydrodynamics uh, like what will be the void fraction even uh, what will be the frictional pressure drop uh, whenever uh, liquid will be flowing through the bed. And also what will be the interfacial area or uh, you can say that surface area whenever the fluid uh, will be come in contact with the uh, solid particles uh, in the granular bed. So, in this lecture we will try to have some basic law and also terminology of the flow through granular beds. So, in this uh, lecture we will try to uh, learn about the Darcy's law and permeability, specific surface and voids and also what is that cosinic carbon equation based on which you will be able to calculate what will be the frictional resistance whenever fluid will be flowing through the granular beds. So, here what is that Darcy's law that you have to first understand. So, you will see that whenever any single fluid flowing through the bed of solids, this law will be actually uh, talking about that phenomenology of that flow of a fluid whenever it will be flowing through the porous media or bed of the solid particles. So, according to this uh, Darcy's law uh, that is actually uh, given by uh, Darcy in 1856, the flow of water whenever it will be flowing through a packed bed of particle that will be governed by certain relationship. So, that flow of water whenever it will be flowing through of course, it will have some volumetric flow rate at which that it will be flowing. So, that volumetric flow rate uh, will be related with uh, what will be the pressure resistance that is uh, given by that you know bed of solid. Okay. And also you will see that what will be the cross sectional area. Uh, that is occupied by that you know solid particles as well as fluid uh, element inside the bed of solids. And there you will see that uh, whenever it will be flowing that is flow will be flow through that packed bed it may be you know laminar flow or turbulent flow. But uh, during that flow there you will see that some resistance will be incurred by that you know uh, solid particles or surface of the particles uh, that is in the uh, bed or conduit. So, here in this uh, picture you will see that some solid particles are intact in a you know conduit or in a you will see that horizontal pipe or you can say it is a you know that uh, tube. So, in that case uh, through that tube whenever fluid will be flowing at a certain flow rate that may be volumetric flow rate and it will be passing through that uh, direction here it is given in this uh, slide and this is volumetric flow rate and during that flow you will see that uh, there will be a pressure uh, drop. Uh, between two points of length L here as shown in the picture. The pressure at this point A that will be P A and pressure at this point B it will be P B. So, there will be a certain difference of this pressure. So, that pressure drop of course, that P B will be less than P A. So, at the uh, beginning that pressure will be higher whereas, that in the you know downstream there will be a, a lower pressure. So, there will be a difference of that pressure it is called pressure drop. Now, this pressure drop can be you know evaluated by the manometer. If you fixed two manometers uh, in this you know upstream and the downstream position that is A and B position there will be a certain you know that difference in the pressure manometer head that meniscus uh, head of that delta is and from which uh, you will be able to calculate what will the pressure difference by rho z h that I think you know that is the basic understanding of that how to you know measure that pressure drop. So, you will see that as per this uh, Darcy's law that uh, you know Darcy told that that Q that means uh, uh, you know volumetric flow rate will be proportional to the cross sectional area of the bed and inversely proportional to the uh, viscosity of the fluid and also it will be directly proportional to the pressure gradient. That means, here what will be the pressure difference per unit length that will be. 
So, in that case we can write this equation here that is q will be equal to minus k a by mu into p b minus p a divided by l. Here mu is the viscosity k is called kappa, kappa is basically you know that permeability coefficient it is called that means here this allowing the fluid to pass through that bed that is capability of that you know uh, bed at which that fluid will be passing through that. Now that uh, permissibility or you can say that allowing capability that is called permeability ok. So, that permeability coefficient can be represented by this k that is basically that coefficient. So, here and A is called the uh, cross sectional area of the tube or pipe or you can say vessel here also. And then uh, you will see that uh, pressure difference that is Pb minus Pa and L is called the length between that two points at which that you are measuring that pressure drop. And then uh, we can represent this here Pb minus Pa by L that means here it is measured from the manometer head. So, manometer head basically the difference is delta S. So, we can write here this delta S will be changing with respect to the length. So, here we can write here uh, P B minus P A that will be equal to here rho G D H by D L. Here P B means rho G H then delta uh, P B means delta P means here delta H uh, per unit length that means uh, delta L. So, here we are having uh, this Q uh, relationship like this and uh, in this case this equation can be represented other way also that from this uh, q uh, and a that means uh, we can write this uh, q uh, will be equal to uh, u into a u into a or u will be equal to q by a q is the volumetric flow rate a is the cross sectional area so u will be equal to your uh, superficial uh, velocity so the superficial velocity here that means q divided by this q divided by a that will be represented by u other terms are here here other terms what is that minus k minus kappa by mu this can be you know represented by you know capital K. So, it will be minus delta P by L and in this case you will see that uh, this uh, minus delta P by L which is basically what that we can write this one. This is basically what uh, this uh, rho z dh by dl and here rho z uh, you will see that this uh, you know k will be equal to kappa by uh, mu that is k and here another terms that is k h we are considering here this will be actually k h k h h is in suffix. So, this k h is basically what here this is kappa rho z by mu here including that rho z with that kappa by mu it will be called as that you know capital k h. So, this k h will be equal to kappa rho z by mu this will be actually called hydraulic conductivity. So, this is basically what here uh, what will be the you know resistance by you know that uh, particles that is solid particles whenever fluid will be flowing through the pipe or conduit. In this case that uh, total you know that uh, constant that is kappa rho z by mu this will be your you know hydraulic conductivity. Okay, so, how that hydraulic conductivity is defined here that is capital K H which will be kappa rho z by mu. What is kappa? Kappa is basically that you know permeability coefficient. So, how to calculate that permeability coefficient or hydraulic conductivity from the experiment? So, in this case very simple that you have to allow the fluid at a certain flow rate like you know volumetric flow rate Q. It is known to you that you can measure it by rotameter. Okay. So, if you use that rotameter and if you allow that liquid from a storage tank through a rotameter and allow it to pass through this you know uh, bed of solid particles, you will see that it will be a certain flow rate Q and at that particular flow rate if you measure the pressure between these two points then you will get you know delta P. Okay. So, delta P by L you can easily calculate from that uh, dH by dL here from this equation. So, once you know this uh, dH by dL ok d h by d l and then uh, your uh, velocity is equal to u that means q by cross sectional area then you can easily calculate what will be the k h value hydraulic conductivity that hydraulic conductivity will come here that means u by u by d h by d l ok. So, this is your uh, hydraulic conductivity.
So, once you know that hydraulic conductivity from the experiment, you will be able to calculate what will be the permeability coefficient. That permeability coefficient it will come what? That means, here from that hydraulic conductivity from this equation, that means, here uh, hydraulic that is permeability coefficient kappa that will be is equal to here k h mu by rho g. This will be your uh, permeability coefficient. Okay. So, in this way that you can understand what is that Darcy's law. So, Darcy's law basically that whenever fluid will be flowing through the uh, pipe of uh, you know bed of solid particles they are you will see that uh, the relationship between that volumetric flow rate and the pressure drop that will be represented by this Darcy's law. Example here in a cylinder of cross sectional area a 0 0.002 meter square is packed with particles to make it porous bed. The hydraulic gradient is found to be minus 0 0.5 uh, during a flow of uh, fluid at uh, 20 meter cube per hour through the porous medium of packed bed. Now, find the hydraulic conductivity of the porous medium. The same thing that here you have to know what will be the Q. Q value is given to you that means, volumetric flow rate is given 20 meter cube per hour. So, it is basically 20 by 3600 that means, meter cube per second. And then use that Tarsis law as Q will be equal to minus kappa A by mu into P B minus P A by L. That means, K A is into A into D A is by D L. Now, you know that D A is value, what is the D A is value it is given? I think it is minus 0 0.5 and D L value that means, here length of that pipe it is given or vessel it is given. If it is unit length, you can consider that one. So, uh, that is why you can say that D A is by D L will be equal to what? And then uh, A is the cross sectional area it is given to you and also this K is value then after substitution of this value then you will it will be coming as 5.56 meter per second. Okay. So, this uh, unit of that hydraulic conductivity is basically meter per second. And then uh, another term it is called surface uh, area and also what is a specific surface area and also void is. So, you will see that the general structure of uh, a bed of particles can often be characterized by the specific surface area of bed that is denoted by S B here capital S B. So, be careful here the notation here S B this is basically the specific surface area of the bed and also this uh, general structure of that bed is characterized by the voids of the bed that is represented by the notation epsilon f. Now, in this case you will see that this specific surface area generally we know that the surface area per unit mass, but here we will get here this specific surface area based on volume of the bed. So, that is why this S b is the surface area presented to the fluid per unit volume of the bed that is capital S b here. So, be careful here too you know remember this notation S b this is basically the surface area presented to the fluid per unit volume of bed. What is the surface area that means whenever the solid particles will be intact in that vessel you will see that whenever fluid will be pass flowing that is through that bed of course, there will be certain gap between the uh, you know solid particles through which that uh, you know fluid will be flowing. So, that gap will be called as void is. Now, whenever that fluid will be passing through that void is that fluid will come into contact with the that solid surfaces. Okay. Now, how much that solid surfaces will come in contact with that fluid that will be represented by the surface area. Now, that surface area you cannot measure at absolute value there. So, you have to measure what will be that surface area total in total that means, out of total volume that you can say. So, that is why this specific surface area in this case it is defined as the surface area that means, which will be available to get contact with the fluid okay, per unit volume of the bed. So, when the particles are packed in the bed in this case this uh, specific surface area will be you know uh, dimension will be as here uh, that means, uh, uh, meter square per meter cube. So, here area uh, unit of area is meter square and unit of volume is meter cube. So, this is basically coming as 1 by meter that means, 1 by length unit you can say. And then coming to the another uh, you know characteristic factor it is called void fraction. 
void fraction it is simply called as void is also. So, it is basically that uh, how much volume of the void out of total volume of the bit that is called void is or void fraction ok void fraction. So, this void fraction will be represented by epsilon f that means what are the volume is can be occupied by the fluid that is void is that will be represented by a fraction out of total bed volume. So, epsilon f is the fraction of the volume of the bed not occupied by the solid materials that means occupied by the fluid element only. Thus, the fractional volume of the bed occupied by the solid material will be what remaining portion. So, if I get the fractional volume of the uh, liquid as epsilon f then remaining volume fraction it will be 1 minus epsilon f. So, this 1 minus epsilon f is basically epsilon of p that means particle volume fraction particle volume fraction. Then other than this volume of fluid which is occupied by the solid this is called volume fraction of solid. Now, another terms uh, will be you know uh, known to you that will be called the specific surface area of the particle that will be denoted by only capital S here it is not S B here only capital S this is basically specific surface area of the particle which is defined as the surface area of the particle per unit volume of particle per unit volume of particle. So, in this case also you can get the dimension 1 by length because here surface area is meter square and volume is meter cube. So, meter square by meter cube it is basically that 1 by meter. So, basically 1 by length unit. So, for sphere if we consider that these things the specific surface area what will be that. So, for sphere the surface area will be pi dp square and the volume of the sphere it will be as pi dp cube by 6. So, it is generally after simplification it will come 6 by dp ok. So, this is called you know specific surface area of a sphere. So, you have to know that what is the specific surface area of sphere which is basically 6 by dp. What is dp? dp is the particle diameter. If suppose the particles are not in regular in shape that means irregular in shape there you have to consider what will be the sphericity that we have discussed in the earlier lectures that what is the sphericity how to calculate it. If you know that sphericity then you have to multiply the sphericity with that particle diameter. So, then you have to have that 6 by phi dp phi is basically that sphericity. And then what will be the relation between that S and SB? Capital S is basically that surface area per unit volume of particle and SB is basically surface area per unit volume of bed. So, what is the relation between these two characteristic factors? Now, they are related like this here it is given in the slides. So, S B will be is equal to what here S B will be equal to surface of particle surface of particle divided by volume of bed ok. This is the definition of S B that is equal to surface of particle by volume of particle into volume of particle by volume of bed. We are having here just you know multiplying by volume of particle and also dividing by that volume of particle here. So, it will be cancelled out ultimately surface of particle by volume of bed. So, it will be coming like this. Now, surface of particle by volume of particle it is basically S specific surface area of particle and here volume of particle by volume of bed is basically what is that volume fraction of particle in the bed or you can say S into here 1 minus epsilon f epsilon p is basically what 1 minus epsilon f epsilon f is basically volume fraction of fluid. So, that is why we can simply write that S b will be equal to 1 minus epsilon f into S or epsilon p into S. So, this is the relationship between these two characteristic factor. Then some important points that you have to remember here uh, it is said that that for a given shape of particle S increases as the particle size reduced. Of course, it will be there as per that definition that we are having here S will be equal to 6 by dp. So, if dp is increases that means surface area will be you know reducing if dp decreases that means smaller particles will give you the more surface area. 
Also, as epsilon f that means volume fraction of fluid if it is increased flow through the bed becomes easier and so the permeability coefficient kappa will increases that you have to then remember this is also important point. Also, if the particles are randomly packed then volume fraction of the fluid should be approximately constant throughout the bed and the resistance to flow of the same in all directions will be you know constant. Okay. So, this is the things that are uh, important three points that you have to remember whenever fluid will be flowing through the pipe. Now, let us do one example in a porous medium it is seen that the fluid is moving at a fluid volume fraction of 50 percent. If the specific surface area of the particles is equal to 100 meter square per meter cube a bed, what should be the surface area per unit volume of the bed when the particles are packed in a bed. So, here this you will see that specific surface area of the particles is given that is 100 meter square per meter cube of that particle not that bed. Then you have to find out what will be the surface area per unit volume of bed when the particles are packed in the bed. So, we know that what is the relationship between that uh, you know surface area of the bed and the surface area of the particle. So, in this case surface area of the bed is equal to S b and uh, surface area of particle is S and the 1 minus epsilon f is basically the volume fraction of the particle. So, if you know this uh, S value, S value is given to you here 100 and 1 minus epsilon f also volume fraction of the fluid is given to you. So, after calculation you will get this 50. What is the unit will be there? Similarly, that meter square per meter cube of bed here. Here meter square surface area of the particle per volume of the bed. So, this uh, you can have. Next, uh, we will discuss about that cosine Kármán equation. This is very important whenever fluid will be flowing through that you know bed of the solid particles and whenever flow will be in streamlined flow. That means, the Stokes flow regime that means, very laminar flow you can say. In that case, what should be the pressure drop during the flow of a fluid at a certain velocity okay, through the porous media at that laminar condition. In this case, uh, we will derive this cosine and Kármán equation based on that the concept of flow through a tube and flow through a pores in a bed of particles. In that case, uh, we know that in fluid mechanics we have learned something about that how can Poisson's equation whenever any single fluid will be flowing through the pipe in absence of any solid particles. That means, there will be no resistance only thing wall resistance will be there. So, whenever fluid will be flowing through the pipe, that pipe is not filled with the solid particles. In that case, what will be the frictional resistance, what will be the frictional pressure drop, how is it related with the you know velocity of the fluid or volumetric flow rate of the fluid. I think you know that uh, that is uh, actually uh, I think taught in your uh, fluid mechanics uh, uh, subject that, uh, that that equation that relationship between that volumetric flow rate and the pressure drop that is represented by the Haugen Poissolis equation. Okay. So, that Haugen Poissolis equation as per that we know that u will be is equal to that means velocity will be is equal to dt square by 32 mu into minus delta p by L. Okay. Here in this case dt is called tube diameter or pipe diameter and mu is called viscosity and delta p by L is basically pressure drop per unit length of the pipe. So, in that case the equation for flow through a circular tube which will be represented or which will be suggested or which can be derived okay, from the momentum balance and that is given by hagen poissoli and which is known as hagen poissolis equation for laminar flow which can be represented by this equation number 1. Again we have learned that what is Darcy's law. In the case of Darcy's law we know that whenever fluid will be flowing through the pipe that velocity of the fluid through that bed of solid particles or porous media that also will be related to the pressure drop. So, there itself u will be equal to k into minus delta p by L. So, this is basically the Darcy's law. So, equation 1 is hagen poissolis equation in absence of particle and equation 2 is the 
Dirac's law equation which is in presence of solid particle. Both are related with the velocity and pressure drop, velocity and pressure drop. Okay? Now, if we use this concept of hagen poissonitz equation in porous media, how then it will be there? Let us consider this. If the free space in the bed is assumed to consist of a series of tortuous channel in equation 1, we can then manipulate or that equation 1 can be written for flow through a particle bed as equation number 3. So, in this case be careful that we are considering here that bed of solid particles will have the void is in such way that the fluid will be flowing through that void is that means fluid will be flowing through a an imaginary channel very tortuous channel or you can say that very you know that narrow channel okay that means here the fluid will be passing through the gap between particles here like this suppose particles are you know arranged like this you will see that so fluid will be flowing like this through that you know gap that is channel as a channel here like this here channel like this through the gap here again like this here it will be flowing like this so there will be that you can say that n number of you know channels n number of tortuous channels zigzag channels that is basically the gap through which that fluid will be flowing so as a channel you can say so that channel will be represented as a that one circular five of narrow dimension of narrow you know diameter say, range so that is why if the free space in the bed is assumed to consist of a series of tortuous channels here equation one can be rewritten for flow through a particulate bed as like this what is that ua ua is the actual velocity of the fluid here is equal to u by epsilon f u is the superficial velocity and epsilon f is the volume fraction of the fluid so superficial velocity divided by the volume fraction of the fluid it will be your actual velocity i think we have discussed about that superficial velocity and actual velocity in the previous lecture itself also so how that actual velocity will be defined that will be superficial velocity by volume fraction of the fluid so, this actual velocity can be then as per hagen poissonitz equation represented by this d dash m square by k dash into mu into minus delta p by l dash. What is that hagen poissonitz equation here? Here this is basically what u will be is equal to hagen poissonitz equation is basically u is equal to dt square by 32 mu into minus delta p by l. This is your hagen poissonitz equation where there will be no particle present but in presence of particles we are considering this equation again but here dt will not be absolute dt here so dt will be the channel diameter okay there may be n number of channels so for that how many channels will be that we do not know so in that case total you know cross sectional area if we add all those cross sectional area of the channels that will be you know that dm dash we are representing so in that case we are considering dm dash so dm dash then it will be square now this instead of 32 here we do not know what will be the coefficient here so there we are considering here k dash and mu of course will be their viscosity and remaining part minus delta p by l so this equation 3 is basically this now in this case also one important point l dash this l dash may not be the same as what is the length of that circular pipe what is considered for that hagen poissonitz equation so this l dash will not be exactly the same here why it will not be same because this channel will be having that zigzag path so actual straight distance and its zigzag path distance will not be same but this distance may be you know proportional to this l so l dash here channel length will be proportional to the l we are considering that it will be proportional to the l so here in this case l to be represented by l dash here so See, as per hagen poissonitz equation and as per concept of that hagen poissonitz concept, we can write this uh, equation uh, here uh, in uh, porous bed by this equation number 3. 
where epsilon f is the void fraction, u a is the actual velocity of the fluid, d m dash would be equivalent diameter of the pore channel, l dash is the length of the channel and k dash is the constant depends on the you know structure of the bed. Now question is that why u a, u a is basically actual velocity. So whenever fluid will be flowing through that porous bed, the cross sectional area which will be occupied by the fluid will not be the same as total cross sectional area of the you know circular pipe. So, in that case since the cross sectional area will be reducing that fluid element will have more velocity whenever it will be flowing through the void fraction. So, that is why actual velocity here to be considered, but this actual velocity will be related with the superficial velocity where there will be no you know solid particles only the empty vessel cross sectional area will be considered. In that case the superficial uh, velocity will be related to the actual velocity by volume fraction of the fluid. So, which is defined as u a will be equal to u by epsilon f. So, this is your actual velocity. Okay. So, u a and l dash are not the same as u and l that is as per wagen poisson equation. The actual velocity of fluid through the void of the packed bed and is related to the super velocity by u by this equation. Then Kojeni 1927 he proposed that this what would be that d m dash value that is channel diameter. Okay. So, d m dash you know will be related to that epsilon f volume fraction of the fluid as well as you know the surface area per unit volume of the bed. So, this will be is equal to epsilon f by s into 1 minus epsilon f this is given in equation number 4. And then what will the epsilon f by s b that means volume of voids filled with the fluid divided by weighted surface area of the bed. So, that will be cross sectional area normal to the flow by weighted perimeter this is basically what 1 by 4 into hydraulic mean diameter, where hydraulic mean diameter is basically defined as 4 into cross sectional area normal to flow by weighted perimeter. So, that is why we can then you know have the value of d m dash that is the effective you know channel diameter of that you know channel through which that fluid will be flowing through the porous media. So, that will be equal to epsilon f by s into 1 minus epsilon f, where epsilon f by s b will be equal to 1 by 4 into hydraulic mean diameter. Now, then taking that u a will be equal to u minus f u by epsilon f and l dash is proportional to l that means k l k is called proportionality constant. Then from equation number 3 with that equation number 4 we can have this u a will be equal to u by epsilon f that will be equal to d m dash square by k dash mu into minus delta b by l dash. Now, substituting this d m dash here we are having epsilon f by s b whole square by it will be k and then k dash into mu into minus delta p by l. Then epsilon f square by k double dash here k double dash this is k dash into k we are assuming here k double dash into s square into 1 minus epsilon f whole square here s b is equal to s square by s b is equal to s into 1 minus epsilon f we have substituted here and then 1 by mu here into minus delta p by l. So, after substitution of d m dash here in equation number 4 in equation number 3 then we are having this equation of actual velocity of fluid which is flowing through the porous media. Now, in this case k double dash here k double dash is generally known as cogeny is constant that will be equal to minus k into k dash and a commonly accepted value for this k double dash is 5 as per cogeny. Therefore, we can write u will be equal to from this equation number okay, u will be equal to epsilon f cube by 5 into 1 minus epsilon f whole square into s square uh, into uh, 1 by mu into minus delta p by l. So, after simplification we are having this. Okay. So, this is the equation which is related you know with the pressure drop or unit length of that 5 or packed bed you can say and also it is related to the surface area of the particle volume fraction of the fluid and also viscosity of the fluid. And here this u is basically the superficial velocity since we are able to calculate what will be the superficial velocities that is why this equation 
representation based on the superficial velocity instead of actual velocity. Now, if we consider that sphere any spherical particle as a packing material which is to be placed in the packed bed then allowing that fluid through the pipe. So, in that case what will be the surface area of that particle that will be pi dp square by pi dp cube by 6 that will be 6 by dp. Now, after substitution of this s value here in this equation again instead of s here and finally, you can get this equation minus delta p by l that will be equal to 180 to mu u into 1 minus epsilon f whole square divided by dp square into epsilon f cube. So, this equation is called cosine carbon equation and this equation valid only for laminar flow non porous particle. So, in this case you have to remember. So, this things uh, that uh, cosine carbon equation has a limitation only that it will be applied for only laminar flow as well as non porous particle. Also you have to note down that for non spherical uh, particle in that case uh, a particle size distribution a outer mean diameter of dps to be considered instead of only that single particle size because there are n number of particles will be in the packed bed and there you will see that what will be the mean particle size that mean particle size to be considered as a volume to surface area mean particle diameter you have to consider that is called outer mean diameter that is dps that we have discussed in the earlier lecture and also sphericity that you have to consider. So, in that case phi s dps should be used in place of only particle diameter dp. Okay. Now, let us do an example here based on this cosine carbon equation. Here it is said that a packed bed of solid particles of density 2500 kg per meter cube occupies a length of 1 meter in a pipe of cross sectional area of 0 0.04 meter square. The mass of solids in the bed is 50 kg and the surface volume mean diameter that means outer mean diameter of the particles is 1 millimeter. A liquid of density 800 kg per meter cube and viscosity 0 0.002 Pascal second flows through the bed. So, under this condition you have to calculate what should be the voidage that means volume fraction occupied by the liquid of the bed and then also you have to calculate what will be the pressure across the bed when the volume flow rate of liquid is 1.44 meter cube per hour. So, in this case consider this case A here what is given and what is not given here very simple that particle density is given to you, length of the pipe is given to you, cross sectional area is given to you, even mass of the solid in the bed it is given to you, particle mean diameter is given to you okay. and also their liquid density and viscosity are given to you. Now, from the mass of the particle, mass of the particle can be represented by this equation m will be equal to a into l into 1 minus epsilon f into rho p. What is that? a is cross sectional area, l is the length of the pipe. So, a l is volume of the pipe into 1 minus epsilon f that means volume fraction of the particle there into density of the particle then it will be having that mass of the particle. So, this mass of the particle is equal to 50 kg whereas, cross sectional area a is given, l is given, epsilon f to be found rho p is given to you. So, from this equation if you solve this equation after substitution of other values you will be able to find out what will be the volume fraction of fluid. So, it is coming as epsilon f is equal to 0 0.5 and the case b in that case what is the liquid flow rate is given it is given 1.44 meter cube per hour. So, it will be coming as you have to convert it to meter cube per second. So, you have to divide it by 3600 it will be coming as 1.44 by 3600. So, it will be your volumetric flow rate. So, this volumetric flow rate divided by cross sectional area you will get that velocity of the fluid. So, it will be 0 0.01 meter per second. So, we know now velocity of the fluid. Now, what will be the pressure drop across the bed? Now, pressure drop as per that cosine Karman equation it will be coming as 180 into mu u into 1 minus epsilon f whole square by dp square epsilon f cube what will be the value then. 
Now, before coming to that, you have to check whether this cosine Kármán equation to be valid here or not. So, cosine Kármán equation valid only for laminar flow when Reynolds number will be less than 10. So, in that case, what will be the Reynolds number here as per that given problem? After substitution of rho p u d p by 1 minus epsilon f into mu as per definition of this Reynolds number here as per this, then it will be coming as 8 which is less than 10. So, this cosine Kármán equation will be applied only if Reynolds number of particle which is defined by this equation, if it is coming less than 10, then only you can apply this cosine Kármán equation to calculate the pressure drop. So, applying this cosine Kármán equation here, we are having this pressure drop as 7200 Pascal. Okay? Let us do an another example here. Now, in this case 1.28 gram of powder of particle density 2500 kg per meter cube are charged into the cell of an apparatus for measurement of particle size and specific surface area by permeometry. The cylindrical cell has a diameter of 1.14 centimeter and the powder forms a bed of depth 1 centimeter, dry air of density is given to you, viscosity is given to you and flows at a rate of 36 centimeter cube per minute through the powder bed okay, and producing a pressure differences of 100 millimeter of water across the bed. So, in this case what will the surface to volume mean diameter and also specific surface area of the powder sample that you have to find out. So, here to calculate the cross sectional area of the cell you have to first know what will be that 1.027 into 10 to the minus 4 meter square it is given I think because diameter is given. So, cross sectional area you can easily calculate. Then cell volume what will be the cell volume? area into depth that will be equal to this after calculation and then what will be the mass of the powder mass of the powder it is given I think 1.28 gram you have to convert it to kg this is actually m into 1 minus epsilon f into rho p into cell volume ok. So, that will be equal to this kg. So, therefore, from this equation you can have epsilon f will be equal to this and then superficial velocity of the air that is flow rate of air divided by cross sectional area that you can calculate. Okay. After that you have to calculate the pressure drop equivalent to 100 millimeter water. So, this basically H rho G that will be equal to 981 Pascal after substitution of this value. And then substituting into that cosine Kármán equation here this value is given to you and other parameters are given except that dp value particle diameter and then after solving you can get dp value is equal to 20.08 micrometer. Whereas, Reynolds number also to be calculated whether this cosine Kármán equation to be valid or not. So, in that case Reynolds number is found to be 0 0.0153 which is less than 10. And then in second case you have to calculate what will be the surface area of the particle. This is pi dp square by pi dp cube by 6 that means 6 by dp. dp already you have found here 20.08 micrometer. So, 6 by 20.08 into 10 to the power minus 6 that is converted to meter then finally you are getting 2.998 into 10 to the power 5 meter square per meter cube. And also what will be the surface area per unit volume of that particle that you can calculate what will be the surface area that you got here in this case after that you have to divide it by you know that density of that particle that will be 2500 then it will be coming as 119.5 meter square per kg. So, surface area per unit mass of the particle that will be equal to 119.5 meter square per kg. So, I think you understood this problem here. Next problem here you will see that water flows through a 4 kg of solid particle of density 2500 kg per meter cube forming a packed bed of depth of 0 0.475 meter and diameter 0 0.0757 meter. The variation of frictional pressure drop across the bed with water flow rate in the range of 200 to 1200 centimeter cube per minute. Uh, is shown in columns 1 and 2 in table here in this case viscosity of water is given here. Then in this case uh, you have to find out what will be the mean surface uh, volume diameter of the particles and uh, also calculate that relevant Reynolds number. So, here uh, the pressure drop against uh, that flow is given to you and then uh, what is the volume surface uh, mean diameter that you have to find out and also you have to calculate what will be the relevant Reynolds number. So, in this case you have to apply that cosine Kármán equation where uh, that the pressure drop is related to the simple that velocity. 
So in this case, if we plot those values in a, a graphical uh, form here, in this case, uh, in x-axis uh, u and uh, in y-axis uh, that is delta p by l, then we are getting this equation. And from this, uh, you know, profile or equation, you can say that uh, what will be the that uh, slope of this uh, you know graph, and it will be coming as two into ten to the power six. Okay, so here uh, we are. Uh, getting this uh, slope as 2 into 10 to the power 6 uh, from the graph and from the cosine Karman equation we can write here this delta p by l that will be 180 mu uh, into 1 minus epsilon f whole square dp square by epsilon f cube into u. Now this uh, uh, except this u that this one only uh, we can say this portion uh, will be is the uh, coefficient. Uh, this coefficient is will be equals to the slope of this you know graph. So, that is why you can write this uh, value uh, will be equals to that you know slope value it is 2 into 10 to the power 6. So, from this we can have you know that Reynolds number it will be as what is that uh, 2.664. Uh, you know in this case uh, very interesting that uh, epsilon f is equal to 0 0.25 after substitution of dp value. Uh, mu value and epsilon f to be found out. So, from these slopes you will be found out what will be the epsilon f value. So, from this equation again then uh, you have to calculate what will be the mass of that. Uh, then from the above equation you can find the particle diameter dp as 0 0.0018. So, once you know that epsilon f value from this you know mass of that uh, value is given whatever it is in the problem. And uh, from this slope, if you are not having that uh, dp value as per problem, you have to find it out from the slope value, what will be the dp value. So, once you know that dp value and epsilon a value and then what will be the Reynolds number that you can calculate from this equation. Okay. So, here uh, interesting that from this you know pressure and uh, velocity relationship, you have to first make a graph and what will be the slope from that slope, you can calculate what will be the you know parameter which is not known to you. If epsilon f is not given to you, dp is given then you can easily calculate what will the epsilon f. If epsilon f is given to you, but dp is not given to you then you can easily calculate what will be the dp value. Other way also if suppose that epsilon f is given, dp is given, but viscosity is not given then you can calculate viscosity also from this slope. So, once you know those values you have to calculate Reynolds number. Okay that you have to find out as per problem. So, this is the way to calculate that Reynolds number as well as uh, other parameters from the pressure velocity relationship. I think you understood the problem and also in the lecture uh, what is Darcy's law, what is cosine karman equation, what is that hagen poiseuille equation, how that hagen poiseuille concept can be utilized to you know derive that cosine karman equation and what is the validity of that. Cosine Karman equation to calculate or to estimate the pressure drop. Okay. Uh, I think uh, you understood these things, and uh, in the next lecture, we will also try to uh, discuss more about this flow phenomena for fluid whenever it will be you know flowing through the packed bed. Uh, there, uh, also we will discuss about uh, more about that flow phenomena under the uh, laminar as well as inertia condition. So, there we will also uh, derive uh, another, uh, another important very important equation that is called Argon equation based on which you can calculate the frictional pressure drop through a packed bed uh, where laminar and uh, you know turbulent condition to be considered. So, thank you for giving uh, attention have a nice day.